Good morning everyone. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Melissa and today I have three commonly found thrift store items that we're gonna flip and make beautiful. Now all of these items are things that you can find in your local thrift stores or something very similar to them. They don't have to be exact, but let's go ahead and get started so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This first one is a shoe care box that I picked up at Goodwill for just a few dollars. I wanna say that it was $3.99 or $4.99, but I really needed something in the living room to kind of give me a place just to put all the junk. The cat hair brush, extra remote controls, um, the cat hair cleanup tool, whatever else, um, phone chargers, whatever else I could find to put in there just to kind of clean things up and have a nice elegant place to store them out of sight. This box is, um, going to be just something very very simple but elegant and I first started off with two coats of white chalk paint and now here you can see me distressing the edges just to give it a little bit more of a worn look because this is more of an antique type or vintage type piece of um, small furniture or um, storage box what have you I'm just changing out my paper here. I think I'm using a 120 grit. You just wanna use very fine paper on this. And I'm just trying to get some of that paint off that I covered up the bolts with. And then of course, we're gonna go inside next with the white paint. I had contemplated painting the inside a different color, but I really like the idea of being able to see everything inside the box, whether it's light in the room, dark in the room, I'll just be able to find things quickly. And then next I'm gonna use some spackle from the Dollar Tree. You can also pick this up at Walmart. Very inexpensive, of course, at Walmart. And then a buck 25 at Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna go over the stencil, trying to make everything very smooth, trying to eliminate any kind of texture on the surface. And this does take a few minutes just to work it into the stencil. And now that we have the stencil off, I'm just gonna do a little cleanup here. This is gonna set to dry about 30 minutes. And then I'm coming in again with fine grit sandpaper just to get off any of the small ridges that I found. And I know you can't see me here, but I'm blowing on it to get the dust to go bye-bye. And I'm gonna go in with some more of the same white chalk paint. I think it's kind of funny how whenever you put this spackle on the wall, it dries plain white, but if you put it on something else like this, it dries in kind of a cream color. It's strange. If anybody knows why that happens, let me know. Um, not hugely important, just something I kind of observed. But I'm just going in here around all of the edges, making sure that I don't have any of that cream color peeking through and that we have a nice finish. And I'm going to set this aside for, again, 10-15 minutes to dry. You can certainly use your heat gun before I come back in with some gold leaf rub and buff. And I know this video is moving kind of fast. I want to be conscious of your time. I, I so appreciate the time you spend with me here. So I want to make sure that I am getting the content to you in a quick and efficient way, but I also don't want to deprive you of some of the details. So if you ever find that the videos are moving a little too fast or even just a little too slow for you to keep you interested, please let me know in the comments or drop me an email and I will certainly take those ideas into consideration. And I just want to point out that here off camera, I believe while I was waiting on that paint to dry after painting the stencil, I popped on just a small finial to use as a handle just to grab that top easily. And I put a little rub and buff on there too. The rub and buff doesn't take very long to dry. It's almost instant. So now I'm just going to go in and slightly dry brush on some white so that we just really have that pink rub and buff, pink and gold rub and buff sneaking through. And 
even if you find that you get a little heavy handed with the white paint it's okay to go back in with the gold and just do a little touch up here and there just keep working with it until you get the look you're going for And so now I'm just going to touch up the hardware on the box with the rub and buff, the bolts on the side, including the latch on the front. Now I did go back and do a second touch up to that mark that was on the front that you just saw there. And when everything was completely dry, just a few minutes later, I went in with some clear Waverly wax just to protect this piece. And as you can see, I'm rubbing it off almost immediately and it's giving it a sheen, but not too much of a satiny sheen, just the perfect um, sheen for a vintage piece. I love all the wood grooves and markings on this box. This is why I chose not to further dry brush because I didn't want to accentuate those. I want to be able to see them when the light hits it the correct way. But you could certainly, if you get a piece like this that has all of those wood grains in it as vibrant as this one does, you could dry brush over and make them pop even a little bit more. But this piece is done and inside there houses all that junk that I was saying I needed a place to put. I hope you guys like this one. I think it's super cute. I found this little votive lantern at Goodwill browsing the aisles. It was kind of hidden back there and I thought, wow, this thing wants to come home with me. So my love for lanterns would not allow me to pass this up. I want to say it was $1.99 and I absolutely fell in love with it, but it did need a facelift. We gave it a coat of gold metallic spray paint in matte. It only really needed the one coat and it was ready for transfers. So I have quite the collection of these small rubble and transfers and I'm going to start off by putting some green on here and then gold and then in a few minutes you'll see me add in some additional color with some reds, pinks, etc. I don't plan to use this lantern to hold a votive, although in playing back this video, I realized that there's a votive candle in there. I remember after it was painted, I just popped one in to see what it would look like through the little um, shade that's built in and apparently never removed it. So disregard that because that's going away and we're going to put some beautiful dried flowers in its place and make this just a nice little cute vessel for some dried flowers for fall.
When I'm at the thrift store, I never pass over the glassware aisles. As common or as ordinary as many of the items can seem, I can almost always find a little gem. So I picked up this last time, this 16 inch decanter and thought, wow, wouldn't it be cute to put a terrarium in here? Now I've made terrariums in the past, but never anything in this small of an opening. So bear with me. <laughs> and um, we're gonna come up with kind of a unique way to get the items inside without disturbing the items, without making a mess, we'll say that. To start off, I'm gonna add a little bit of interest to the bottom of the decanter by painting on a band about an inch and a half to two inches up from the bottom. I mixed together the chalk paint in green antique with a little bit of white acrylic paint to get just a little bit lighter tone of green. And as you can see, painted that across the bottom. It took about two coats and when it was dry, I added on some Mod Podge, which I'm gonna just allow to dry for just a second, just to get a little tacky. It doesn't have to dry entirely. And I'm gonna use that as a surface to adhere my gold leaf foil to. So I'm just going to quickly rub some of this on and there's going to be just a hint of gold here when we're done. Not a whole lot, just a nice little hint. And when I have that done, I'm gonna take a little bit of the coffee grounds that I have left over from the Dollar Tree and some pebbles and start to fill just the very bottom portion of the jar. These first pebbles that I put in are basically just to take up space. And this coffee will simulate soil. I do have some remnants of the coffee ground sticking to the inner sides of the decanter. So I'm just taking a dry paintbrush and kind of sweeping those away. In preparation for this craft, I went into my potpourri faux and dried flower stash and pulled out a couple of interesting pieces that I'm gonna try to incorporate into this terrarium along with some moss. And what I'm doing here is I'm gluing the first three elements together. And as it progresses, you'll see that I wisen up and start to glue more pieces together outside of the terrarium. And then we'll put them inside and that makes the whole task a little bit easier. So here's where I start to build another one of the elements. I'm just attaching a little bit of faux moss. Actually, I don't even think that's faux. That's real moss, um, possibly even out of my own backyard. So I glued that on and I'm just gluing on a few other interesting pieces. This is a little twig. I have this cute little bird that I pulled off of another craft. So you saw me there getting the hot glue off from the previous project and we're just popping it on there just to add a little bit more detail. And you guys, I've had these little, I don't, I don't think they're really ceramic and they're not resin. I'm not quite sure what they're made of, but I have a set of two of these mushrooms and thought this would be perfect for this project. I've had these mushrooms in my stash for years and never found anything to use them for. So I went to get a piece of black felt so I could put it behind here. Hopefully it makes it a little bit easier for you to see. Now here's where I make a mess. <laughs> I know from past that if you missed the moss that has dried up, if you missed it, it makes it a little bit more pliable. But boy, did I make a mess there on my table. So I hope that's not too much of a distraction and we'll just keep going. And you'll see me periodically just adding in additional elements. 
here's a second little twig batch that I put together and then I put that together with the first larger so kind of building the scene outside of the vessel And here are these three initial leaves that I had put in and pulled back out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and glue them to the back of the other set that I made. This will offer a little bit of stability and also make sure that everything's placed exactly the way I want it to be. So I think the key elements of a beautiful terrarium is to have a background a foreground and then some very interesting pieces throughout you also want to make sure that you have some of your dark and light greens incorporated incorporated in there and then some white because white acts as a light just like white flowers will light up your garden at night any little white elements or light colored elements that you put inside your terrarium are going to really draw the eye This is so cute. This came off of my clematis. So when the bloom had fallen apart, that little fuzzy piece was left and I picked it off. I picked off several and put them in terrariums. They're so cute. Now I did actually add in a couple of these dried white leaves just to look like they were leaves fallen and scattered. And here's a final look at what we've created today. Let me know in the comments below which was your favorite and whether you can see yourself making something similar to this. I hope that you all had as much fun in this video as I did. I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for sticking with me, for subscribing, for liking, commenting all of your support no matter how small is so appreciated and helps this channel grow until next time take care